So terrible news for the Baltimore Ravens because running back Owen Wright, he is going to be out for the foreseeable future with a broken foot. Uh, and that really sucks because Owen Wright, he was looking like the best running back who the Baltimore Ravens had played in the preseason. He was really looking like he was going to hold down that RB3 spot behind Derrick Henry and behind Justice Hill, holding it down until Keaton Mitchell got back. He really looked like he was going to be something. And the thing about him, he not only looked good as a running back, and think about that too, he was running behind this offensive line in the preseason where the run blocking was not good. So for him to even look good as a running back behind the way the offensive line was really not run blocking, that says a lot about him. So just imagine what he could do. I know he wasn't going to get no crazy opportunity in the regular season. We know that. But just imagine what he could do behind a starting offensive line. He could look even better. But with Owen Wright, not only was he looking like a good running back, but he was also looking like he could catch passes out of the backfield real nice. But on, on top of that, on top of that, he was also looking like a good returner. So with Owen Wright, he was getting ready to give the Baltimore Ravens, like we've been talking about, a two-for-one, where he plays two positions. He does multiple things, but he only takes up one roster spot. But John Harbaugh did say, Owen Wright, in that last preseason game, he broke his foot. So now he'll be out for the foreseeable future. Um, Harbaugh did say it's not season-ending, but yeah, who knows which way this thing is going to go now. Um, because now he's he's not going to make the roster, obviously. But how are the Ravens going to handle this? Are, gonna, are they going to do sort of an, uh, an injury settlement with him and release him and allow him to clear waivers and whatnot? And then I know Jeff Zrebic suggested they could possibly sign him back to the practice squad while he heals up. That is a possibility. I'm not sure how the practice squad works when it comes to guys that are hurt, if they can sign or not. I, I don't know how that works. But... It sucks because this really messed up his chances to make the Baltimore Ravens roster and to make the team. Because uh, to me, it was looking like he was set to make the team. Over the running back who they drafted, Rasheen Ali, over John Kelly, uh, over Coolio, over just everybody else. And that's, of course, not a shot at any of those guys, but Owen Wright was the one that really stood out amongst all of them. But now... Due to an injury, and he got the injury right after he did a 34-yard kickoff return. But now that all comes crashing down. We'll see how they handle it. We'll see what, how they move with Owen Wright moving forward. But it just really, really sucks because the Baltimore Ravens RB3 spot, it was already a tricky one. Obviously, with Keith Mitchell being out, um, they just they didn't have that guy yet. And then I remember hearing stuff about Owen Wright right before the preseason started. I remember even the, the day of the first preseason game, Jeff Zrebic even tweeted out. He was like, hey, somebody who to watch out for is Owen Wright. And I was thinking like, oh, okay. All right, Jeff, you said. But he ended up being completely right, on right, uh, because he shined literally from the jump. From the jump, first couple of plays, uh, he was doing this thing for the Baltimore Ravens in preseason. So hopefully he can heal up quickly. Uh, hopefully he can heal up a lot quicker than expected. Uh, so we'll see what happens with him. Somebody else that got hurt. That night of the last preseason game, Trayvon Mullen. And I'm like, man, Trayvon Mullen just cannot catch a break for nothing, man. You feel for him, too. Because he had missed some time with injury. Then Harbaugh said, oh, he's going to be out for a couple of weeks. So he was out for a couple of weeks. I'm thinking like, man, this is really tough for him, especially when in regards to him trying to make this roster because Ravens have a lot of cornerbacks. They got a, It's real busy in the secondary for the Baltimore Ravens. So Trayvon Mullen, I feel like he was already up against a lot to even make the roster. But then when he got hurt, I'm like, oh, that sets him back a lot. But then he came back. Then he returned. But now he has a uh, dislocated shoulder. Um, so how long he's going to be out for with that, no clue. But... The fact that he's hurt right before cut down time, it's, it's not looking good, man. That, that really sucks for him. I feel bad for him, man. Because, again, we, talk, we always talk about how timing is everything, and this is like the worst timing to get that dislocated shoulder, especially with him being sort of a, a bubble player. He, he has, he, he's a bubble player on the roster, so his spot is not safe. So that's tough for him. Also, in the same game, Nick Samak. Nick Samak, the, their rookie center, uh, who they drafted late in this uh, 2024 draft uh, this past April, he got hurt. Uh, now, we don't know the status of his injury yet. Still waiting on official word because we haven't heard anything yet. But that's bad because he was looking like he was getting ready to be the backup center behind Tyler Linderbaum, who he's still out, even though Harbaugh did say 
Tyler Lindebaum, he'll be back for week one. He said Mark Andrews, he should be good for week one as well. So that's great. But the backup, because you, ne- you never know when you're going to need a backup because we've, we've seen it happen plenty of times, all the time, in all different positions for the Baltimore Ravens where the backup needs to come in and play, especially along the offensive line. Offensive line is extremely physical. Every single play you're engaging with somebody that's trying to move you out the way while you're trying to hold them back, protect your quarterback, protect your running back, push them back, hold them back, whatever the case may be. But now Nick Samak, forever, if I have a long he's out for, hopefully it, we end up getting a nice surprise over the next day or two. Oh, Nick Samak, he's straight. Oh, Nick Samak, he's back. Oh, Nick Samak, he's healthy again. Hopefully that happens. But if he got caught it off, then I don't know, man. But that's just it, it's a sucky way to end the preseason because something that we always talk about on here uh when it comes to the roster decisions guys who are making the team guys who are unfortunately not making the team we love when it just comes down to strictly skill and that's it how was their play on the field how well will they fit our system so on and so forth like that but we hate when it has to be determined by injury that's the worst. Now in some sad news um, by the Baltimore Ravens, uh, John Harbaugh did say about a week and a half ago uh, that Coach D, Coach Joe D, uh, who was offensive line coach, he was going to be taking some time off because he was dealing with something. And they said today, uh, unfortunately, uh, he passed away. Um, let's read the statement from Eric DaCosta. It said, today's a sad day for the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, Joe D was a rock, a great coach and a better person. He cared about the team deeply, exhibiting a relentless passion to excel while displaying genuine love for his players. I especially treasure my conversations with him, talking about football and life. I will always remember standing back with Joe on the practice field and watching him up close with his players. Coach was a consummate teacher and friend, and I will miss him deeply. Our thoughts and prayers go to Joe's daughters and family and everyone touched by Joe's remarkable spirit. Um, and this is what President uh, Sashi Brown said about him. He said, Joe D., I was beloved through, throughout our entire organization and the greater NFL community. He was a passionate and devoted football coach who left an in, uh, indelible mark on the lives of many. Above all, he was a dedicated husband, father, and grandfather who always prioritized his faith and family. Uh, true to character, Joe D. was a fighter to the very end. Our hearts are broken for his daughters, Kelly, Emily, and Anna, uh, and his five grandchildren. We take comfort in knowing that he is reunited with his late wife, Tony, whom he loved dearly. His legacy, light, and spirit will remain with all of us. Our prayers are with the entire, his entire family during this very difficult time. And then Jeff Zrebik, he even chimed in. Um, Jeff Zrebik said, not sure I met a nicer man in the dozen years I've been on the Ravens beat uh, than Joe D. Uh, he was a hard-nosed and unrelenting coach. But man, did he love his players and work tirelessly to help them be successful. His family was amazing to rest in peace. Um, so that's tough, man. That's tough because you just it, it, it's, it's a tough situation, man, because I know Patrick Queen chimed in. I know Matt Skura chimed in. I know Ronnie Stanley chimed in. I, I've been seeing a lot of um, different former players, current players, um, former staff members, beat writers. I've been seeing a lot of people chime in on their relationship uh, with Joe D. So what's nice uh, about it is that he obviously left such a positive mark and such a positive impact on so many different people, uh, and that's what he'll be remembered by. Big shout out to my guy Keontae, who y'all been seeing a lot of his questions featured in the videos, but my guy decided, he said, you know what? I've been sending my questions via email, but I want to take it up to another level. I don't want to send them via email no more. I am going to send them directly on Patreon. How did he end up doing that? Because he is our newest Team Keep It Clean Patreon member. So, Keontae, I appreciate you. I know you're going to keep bringing the fire questions. No longer do you need to send it via email. Just send it directly on Patreon. But no, seriously, though, I appreciate you supporting the channel. And speaking of the Team Keep It Clean patrons, this next question came from my guy, Martin, who's been a Team Keep It Clean patron for a while now. So I appreciate you, man. He said, I just wanted to say this before the season starts, just like how people always doubt our Ravens quarterback, just like the last Ravens QB they doubted would ever win a Super Bowl, Lamar will win us a Super Bowl, and there isn't a doubt in my mind. We, we share the same sentiments on that one. Uh, he said, Lamar and Joe Flacco are my favorite quarterbacks. They were both doubted for different reasons, but still, people always been hating on my quarterbacks, but they will see soon. I just pray this upcoming postseason that John Harbaugh won't hit the panic button after the first drive. I've been wanting to say this for a while, but I feel like the reason we lost to the, the Titans playoff game was because it felt like they felt they always had another drive, whereas in the Chiefs game, they played every drive like it was their last drive. We need urgency without immediately smashing the panic button after the first drive. I swear, after that first three and out, 
We didn't run the ball a single time after besides a Lamar scramble. Oh, man. Um, we I know so many Ravens fans, were, we were hurt by that uh, Chiefs game um, big time. But that, that hurt was a different kind of hurt um, because it just really seemed like everything was going the Ravens way. Everything was falling in line for the Baltimore Ravens. Um, but obviously, we know what happened. We know how the story ended, unfortunately. Um with the Baltimore Ravens, yes, it's a matter of not panicking, um, but more so, again, it's just a matter of playing winning football and playing that game. Staying true to themselves, doing what got you there in the first place. Again, yes, you're going to have to pass the ball. We get that. I got no problem with that, with passing the ball, but you also, you got a run game that's pretty good, and, and now the Baltimore Ravens, like, I mean, they already had zero excuses to forget about the run game, because I, I saw something today. I was watching today on, uh, on Speak for Yourself, and I know a lot of Ravens fans are not big fans of Emmanuel Acho, but I, I was watching it. It was Emmanuel Acho. It was Deshaun Jackson. Um, it was James Jones, and uh, it was the guy that uh, had covered the Cowboys for a while. I forget his name. But anyway, I, I do like his takes, though. I enjoy his parts of the show. But um, they were talking about Lamar Jackson and what Acho was saying, and he brought up Greg Roman. He was like, man, he's like, all I heard when Greg Roman was offensive coordinator why don't the Ravens pass the ball? They need to pass the ball. All they do is run. And he was like, and then in the Chiefs game, like they pass, like it, it, he's like, what's it going to be? He said, y'all got to pick a side. Is it that you want to run the ball or is it that you want to pass the ball? What was what, it going to be? And Deshaun Jackson, and he kept saying, hey, I personally know Lamar. And he had played with Lamar, of course. They, they signed him a couple years ago. But Deshaun Jackson, he talked about, well, yeah, that is true, but – he said with the Ravens, and I appreciated this so much because I'm like, finally, somebody who is in the media. I know Deshaun Jackson, not a media media guy, but he has been on uh, Speak for Yourself a little bit more recently. But he was saying that that it's, it's about the Baltimore Ravens. He said they forget their identity when they get to the playoffs. I said, man, has this two been watching? So he, he knows. He, he understands. And he broke it down so smoothly. And it, I was like, man, this is what we be talking about. Finally, somebody who has access to these media people and is out actually out on these shows is speaking in context because again so many of the the media people and we understand because they can't watch every game they don't watch every play but they speak in black and white like it's this and that and that's it but the sean jackson he provided a healthy context to the conversation and that elevated the conversation that took it up another level and another up another notch and i really appreciated that so again Ravens just be yourself, please. That, that's all we ask. Be yourself. Now, we, of course, want you to win every single game that there is to be played. We want you to win every single Super Bowl. But with the Baltimore Ravens, um, if they were to lose, not that it would make the loss better. Well, it would make the loss kind of better. I mean, you never want to lose. But at least go out being yourself, man. That's all we ask. But it's like in the playoffs when you be yourself, all you do is win. You only lose when you decide to be somebody else. So be yourself and you'll get that Super Bowl. Martin, my guy Martin also said, uh, I wanted to say because of fantasy football, I've watched, <laughs> I've watched almost as many Texans games as Ravens and have watched a lot of their games. I see some potential trade opportunities I think we should consider. They have a loaded wide receiver room, and th I think Robert Woods or Noah Brown could be great for us. Every time I've watched them, uh, they always produce for the Texans, but they don't get many opportunities because of how stacked they are. Maybe they could get more opportunity here. I know they aren't the big names, but I really do feel like they could help our team at an affordable trade cost, and the Texans would be more than willing to part with them, unlike their big three. How would you feel about that? Uh, thank you so much uh, for taking the time to read my comment. I pray for a great season. And let's go Ravens, and let's go team. Keep it clean. Appreciate you, Martin. Um, how would they fit in with the Baltimore Ravens, Noah Brown, Robert Woods. Robert Woods, a former, the former Titan, right? That's him. I'm pretty sure it is. But um, it would all depend on how the Ravens ran their offense. Because if you think about it, like if they're third or fourth, even fifth receiver on the Baltimore Ravens, that's not very much opportunity. It's really not. Because you got Zay Flowers expecting to be the number one. Then you got Mark Andrews. They sort of like a 1A, 1B. We expect the Baltimore Ravens to incorporate Isaiah Likely a lot more into this offense, too. Then you got Rashad Bateman and Nelson Aguilar. They could be sort of like a 2, 3, 2A, 2B, whatever the case may be. You got them as receivers getting opportunity, too. 
We ain't even talk about the run game yet. We ain't even talk about the run game. So you got Derrick Henry. You got Justice Hill. We'll see who the third running back ends up being. You got Pat Ricard, who gets opportunities in the passing game here and there, but he gets his opportunities in the passing game as well. Oh, and then you got Lamar Jackson. So if you're a third, a fourth, a fifth receiver on the Baltimore Ravens, when your number is called on, yeah, you want to be ready, but it's very unlikely that your number is going to be called on that much and that often. Um, if the Ravens were to trade for a wide receiver, I don't think it should be a depth guy. If the Ravens were to trade for a wide receiver, I think it should be somebody that's going to be a number one wide receiver, somebody that's going to be out there a whole lot, somebody that is going to leapfrog and be ahead of, of a Rashad Bateman, somebody who's going to be out there, n maybe not as much, but just as much or close to as much as a say Flowers or somebody that's just not not a depth piece, but somebody who's going to be out there on that field a lot. Next question came from my guy Andre. He said, "Hey Engraven, hey Andre, do you think it would be a good idea to actually utilize a rotating system to keep fresh legs on the field? It seemed to have worked last year, and he's talking about an offensive line." Mm, it did work last year Because at first I thought it was weird I still think it's weird But hey, it worked So sometimes weird works mm, I think with I think if you do that Maybe later on in the season But I feel like you can't do it early The reason why I feel like you can't do it early Is because this offensive line They need to gel They gotta click They gotta build rapport and chemistry with each other And if you got this starting offensive line out there initially, it's like, okay, they start to build chemistry and whatnot, even if they make mistakes, and they're going to make mistakes. We got to expect that. But if you got them out there initially, and then you take out the right tackle and the left guard, and you put in new ones, it's like, oh, okay, you're doing a little rotation. And then, okay, you put the starters back, but then you take out the left tackle, and you take out uh, the, the, the right guard, and it's like, okay, we, we're doing a rotation, trying to keep everybody fit. I just, I don't think it would be a very good idea to, for the Baltimore Ravens O-line to build chemistry that way Because they will be in the flow They could be in the flow And then boom, you take somebody off to keep them fresh And that could just mess things up So I don't think it would be a good idea If it's later on in the season And guys are like maybe a little bit hurt They need a little bit of a breather or whatnot Because Ronnie Stanley last year, he was hurt Morgan Moses last year, he was dealing with a uh, What was it, a, a separated shoulder? I forgot what it was Maybe a torn rotator cuff I forgot exactly what the injury was But he was dealing with a serious injury And he ain't not complaining at one time not one time. But um, so they were dealing with injuries. So that's why Pat McCarry would come in for Ronnie Stanley. Daniel Filele would come in for Morgan Moses. They would switch it up. And I know the Baltimore Ravens did that a couple of years ago at guard with, with Tyree Phillips. And was it Ben Cleveland too? And I know it was somebody else. Ben Bredesen? I, I forgot who the other person they did it with. But they did a rotation at uh, right guard years ago. Um, so it's something that's doable. But again, I just, if they're going to do that, I would wait till later on down the road to try something like that out.